Hakan, please come on stage from Better Roaming. You know, when somebody disrupt a whole automotive car dealer sector, and I think it was Noah who hosted you first in London. It was, I think, 2014 or 15 or yeah. when was yeah, it? I and 15. I remember that everyone was like putting out the iPhone and taking photos of uh, what was shown on screen, your impressive dealer network. How many oh. dealers uh, Auto One got? At the end, like 20,000 or? Back then or now? Now? I think we're over 80,000 now. 80,000. And I remember Autoscout is uh, at uh, like 20, 25. So you are like four times bigger than the um, mobile. And, and I, was a, I was a buying from us. Let's it's talk different. about the telecom sector. So, I mean, the obvious question is, um, when you have built such a gigantic unicorn in Germany, and yeah, there are a bit ups and downs, but... Um, it's all about timing, and you move to the UK. Like, why do it all again? Why not take like at least a little bit of a time out and take the family, sail the world, as many are doing? Um, was this telco industry so attractive for you to do it all over again? Um, yeah, I mean, there's the entrepreneurial bug that you want to do. You want to keep building stuff. Um, and uh, then there was, of course, an opportunity. It was timing. It was a special situation. And when did then you first think about this sector? I mean, was it when you were like looking at your mobile phone bill and said, and I can't be right? So my first job as a student in high school was at a telco. And I was a Linux kid running, uh, developing applications and, 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 and running stuff. And then if you're hooked, you're hooked and you keep following up. Um, the industry. So I was really always, always the first guys getting the new phones, multiple phones, and uh, so it's a, yeah, it's a topic that's always interested me. When I was at Rocket, I did mobile, I did apps, and there, there is a certain red line. But so you're yeah. back, you're back to your passion, the telco industry. Yeah. And better roaming. How did this opportunity came across? Did you move for better roaming? to the UK or did you find it while you were in the UK? Well, I, I was already there, there was a, a bank was running a process, there were assets on the market for, for a uh, distressed situation and um, yeah, I think it, it was just an ordinary bidding process, there was PE involved, there was us involved and then later on uh, my partner. And I, I have to ask, did you meet Mr. Abramovich? Oh, I never met Mr. <laughs> Abramovich. The British press is obsessed with it, but uh, I'm not a football player, so I think I'm also not interesting enough. Yeah, I think they invested 300 million in the, in, in the old business, something like this? Yeah, I think about over the last 16 years. I think, look, there are a lot of startups that have their ups and downs and a lot of pivoting and a lot of investment. What we uh, can benefit from is, of course, that there is some infrastructure, licenses, IP patents. There's a lot of things that are laid out now, and um, and we can build on top of that with tech. Okay, help me a little bit with the names. Uh, I, I mean, ironically, Alexander Straub, who um, was the founder of Mondes, who I sold, we're talking 2000, yeah, 2000, 23 years ago, to Seat Pajinjiale, uh, yeah, founded Truephone, and it was Truephone. They uh, presented in London, I think, 2011 at NOAA, so uh, you were there already in the early days, and vice versa. And the, the corporate is called One Global, yes, that's, and that's uh, your company. That's my company. And Better Roaming is, is, is the our, brand name. It's the consumer product. Yeah. It's the consumer. So you have to think about First, you have to come up with a name that unifies. We do a lot of enterprise stuff. We do a lot of IoT stuff. We do uh, software for other telcos. And then I looked at the website and asked the team, what makes us unique? Uh, and what really makes us unique is we're running nine telcos on one global platform. We are running everything on one global core network. We have a lot of global corporate clients who give us all the European employees because they just want one supplier or they need one solution. Banks, we provide compliance services. Who's your largest customer? Or like, you don't need to name it, but this is an a, a very, investment bank? A, a very large investment bank. You would know, <laughs> you would definitely know. Yeah. Fascinating. And so how do you compare to an Amdocs, which is like this Israeli billing software company? Who knows Amdocs? 
Okay, a few people. So it was but used to be worth like 30 billion. That was yellow pages software and I, I think when you look at, we are an MVNO, which, but we are a full MVNO, plus we are a software house. So when I look at the stack, and that's what really got me excited when I looked at this, it starts with the SIM card. Who owns the SIM card? Who owns the operating system on it? Do you run applets on it? There's a lot of, there's a whole ecosystem on SIM cards. Then the question is who issues it? Who owns the eSIM server? That's called SMDP+. None of the telcos in Germany has their own eSIM server. They just go and procure it. Now, is this better or worse? You can discuss it. I see it as a tech angle to acquire customers. We'll get to that. Then who owns, do you have a core network? Who terminates the calls? Who terminates the internet? And then obviously on top, a typical telco has antennas. That's the only thing we don't have. So we rent antenna capacity, but we have the full stack down from the SIM OS up to the core network that we run. And then the question is, do you compete head on with telcos? Or do you go somewhere where there's an equal playing field? And the interesting thing is, yes, they all have these multi-billion dollar equipment and spectrum, but only in their home country. So the moment we are roaming, we're all the same. Deutsche Telekom has no antennas in Switzerland. So now it's equal playing field again. And then I can convince with tech and being faster and closer to the customer and then bring back those customers to telcos. So I, I don't even see it as competitive. I think the most interesting thing to understand in this industry is when the EU forced us to have Rome like at home, it was 2017, and everybody was freaking out. Oh no, all the roaming margins, everything's gone. And they, they ran a study in 2016 and 2018 to compare what does an average EU citizen do when he goes abroad, the German and France. And the actual usage has gone up 20x, which shows you the actual need to roam. And that was 2018. Is that on voice or data? Data. So that was 2018. And that, should, and that is before TikTok, 4K video. So today, perhaps, it's 30x. And uh, I think that's what we need to bridge. The enemy is not other players in the field. The enemy for a telco is the Wi-Fi antenna on your phone because that's the free competitor. That's the Starbucks, the hotel where you can just connect. How do we get you on board uh, with perhaps a better process and a better experience? And then there is enough to share that everybody in the industry is happy. Right. And this large investment bank, your biggest customer, yeah. I'm sure you converted all your auto one investment bank relationships <laughs> no, no, they now to customers. <laughs> we have <laughs> probably had pitch books like, I remember in your <laughs> office, they were like stapling up like that. <laughs> so now you call them back and say, hey, remember right. me? So they've been customers for 10, 15 years. I think there, there is a niche where we are a world leader, which is uh, enterprise call recording. Uh, sounds very boring, it's very important when you're regulated. Call recording. Recording, yes. So if I am a stockbroker, I have my Bloomberg terminal, I have my fixed line phone that is recorded, but when I need to have a bio break or I'm out at lunch and I want to deal, the regulator likes when I have the same compliance standard as at my desk. So you could be also a compliance business, not just a telecom. No, no, business. absolutely. Yeah. So the, it's it's, fascinating. It's How many employees software. do you have? We have 380 people right now. And have you reduced or no. increased? And yeah. you, you go every day to an office, or you're yes. like an overflying chairman type? No, 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 no. I go to the office every morning. We just moved to Farringdon. Uh, Cost cutting? No, no, no. It's a, it's a nicer office. We wanted to be connected. It's close to Elizabeth Line. You can hop up did and down. Did you keep the management team, or did you bring in your old buddies yeah. from Auto One? <laughs> <laughs> the old buddies from Auto One still need to work at Auto One. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Everyone's interest. Um, no, I don't hire from Auto One directly. I think that's also. Um, something oh, it's obvious but yeah. maybe some people had like a sabbatical and yeah yeah there are some people who went to big tech companies in the valley found it boring and then came back that's my hiring profile ex auto one got bored at one of the big five and then exactly. knocking on my door yeah and i mean the value proposition for the enterprise customers is costs i get or comfort or I coverage or what is it no the real cost you have as a big enterprise is not, is my SIM $16 or $18? How does it get into that phone? How do I, do I need to send a physical SIM? Do I have an employee? Do I have to put it in a warehouse? Where do I marry it? Because you have a virtual SIM, I think. We have eSIMs. We also have physical SIMs. But it's really about, can I run it through my MDM? Can I run it through my mobile device manager? That's really the cost. If I'm an airline and I want to replace 2,000 iPads SIM cards, 
Do I really want to fly on 2,000 planes with a needle and replace them? Or do I click a button on my MDM, on my mobile device management tool, and just replace them over the air? Th that's the real cost. And then obviously there's connectivity cost. Um, that, that's one of our, our growing segments is really airlines who wake up and say, hey, I want to change something, but obviously I don't want to get on every plane. So can you help us on the tech angle? Can you help us on connectivity? We have a crew, pilot, we have passengers um, who want to be connected. And then we have POS terminals who need to be connected when we land in different countries. And uh, those are the challenges. So how, out of the 380 people, how many are in sales? Uh, I can tell you there are 200 in tech. <laughs> so exactly, my first intuition was, okay, Hakan bought a like, strong tech company yeah. in the telco industry. There's probably nobody really doing what Truefone back then started and now one global, this better roaming is doing. Yeah. And you're converting this to a top enterprise sales service focused organization where you have like vertical yeah, stories, pitches yeah. based on the end market. How many customers you have? You have more customers than employees yet? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not users, customers. No no, like. no, no, definitely. I think, look, we're in the enterprise segment, we're in the compliance segment, we're in the IoT segment. We just rolled out 250,000 devices in a week in the US, which is quite a load on an IoT platform. We're, we're devices being virtual sims? That's or? where, the, closing the loop, interestingly, is in the auto industry. So there is a, <laughs> there is a very successful, very admired car dealership in the US with a tech partner of us that said, hey, we want to build in trackers, but we will really hit your systems because we'll give all our employees and all stores, we'll give them this and they'll switch it on all at the same time. And usually the CTO gets nervous because like a couple hundred thousand devices hitting the network. So we had to go in and before that refactor everything and say, okay, where are the bottlenecks? Tech style, right? And really going in, how is the platform built? And it worked and everybody was super excited and everything's connected. So it's really bringing that attitude and that was also my feedback, which made me very happy when I went to one of our large banking customers who said, OK, you guys walked in, and I can really see the difference. Yeah, it's, a, it's a very service-oriented, customer-oriented culture. It's very responsive. People follow up. And uh, when you hear that, of course, you're like, OK, we're on a good track. Well, I love the passion and the, the focus of yours. Do you envision doing this like for the next uh, three, four, five years? I mean, yeah. is, is it? Can you say how much revenues uh, One Global has? Yeah, we're seventy million dollar revenue, um, and uh, I think the thing I'm most proud of is we're now roughly ten million uh, EBITDA, so we, we're already profitable now, and uh, that's why I'm also not fundraising. Sorry, we'll see if I'm fundraising. Um, no, and, and it, so it will be it out, of, out of bankruptcy, or yes, yeah. Abramovich was forced to sell it, or both. Well, the board put it in liquidation and we did an asset deal. So we founded a new company, we bought the assets, um, obviously we're taking over all employees, taking over all liabilities, and said this is too good to let it fail, we'll take over and, uh, and, and restart it and revamp it. And it worked very well because the team was really, really uh, committed and, uh, and now I think for everybody it was a good message, everybody can breeze through and say okay, this is a safe platform. Platform's not burning. And, uh, and now it's about conquering markets. You have a startup unicorn founder who comes in and saves a company and manages a lot better to bring services for bankers and airline companies and all of that. Well, you have a voucher, I think, right? Yeah, uh, is it up? Can see, put up no. the voucher. No, any vouchers? Well, they are on the screens all around and otherwise Grab Hakan. Yeah, you can just scan it, and uh, there's, it's a, on a magical theme. You just get a SIM card on your phone. You get 10 gigabytes for free on 5G network here in Switzerland. And just to show you the experience of now a SIM card is more like an app than a physical object. You can switch it on, switch it off, install it, delete it, and uh, it's a real eye-opener. And, and that's what, what will change the telco industry in the next, I would say, 24 months. Well, fascinating. I hope I see you back at NOAA London, your new home. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Hakan. Congratulations. Thank you.